How's it going everyone? Dozer here. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can use Room EQ Wizard to create correction filters, which can then be exported to a stereo impulse response and loaded into your DAW, into a convolution plugin on your master bus so that you can monitor while you're mixing or mastering through the correction filters, which are giving you a more flatter frequency response, such as this. Now, information regarding the pros and the cons and all the debate will be in the video description. Now, I'm just here to show you how to create the filters and how to use the impulse response and stuff like that. Now, you will need a measurement microphone. I am using the Umic One. I'll go into more in depth on that later. But first, a demonstration regarding correction of the higher frequencies. Now, what you're about to see is me monitoring through the correction filters with a flatter response and me moving the microphone a couple of inches. I want you to pay attention to the changing of the higher frequencies. The movement of the microphone is going to represent the movement of your head. Now, as you can see, I attempted to correct up to 10,000 kilohertz over here. And what you're seeing is the higher frequencies pose even more issues. Now, some measurement software does attempt to compensate for this by taking multiple measurements. I'm referring to stuff like ARC, which is the automatic room correction by IK Multimedia. And then you have Sonarworks and there's a couple of other ones out there. So they do multiple measurements and they attempt to correct that by averaging and there's other things that they're doing. Now you're free to experiment and correct the range of frequencies that you want. I recommend you stay below a thousand hertz and even better 500 hertz. Now if you ask a whole bunch of different people you're gonna get a whole bunch of different answers. That's just a general recommendation. So for those that just want to know where and how to get the correction filters, I'll show you quickly. Then I will follow up with a more in-depth explanation about creating the correction filters and the equipment used for those that want to stick around and see how everything was done. So for the people that just want it real fast, here we go. So what you want to do is you want to make sure your left and right studio monitors are matched. And if you're using a sub, there's special consideration. I'll leave a link later on for that. Stick around. You're going to measure your left and your right separately. You're then going to go to your EQ tab. And most of you already know how to create the equalization filters. If not, stick around. Once you've created your correction filters, you'll simply go to File, Export, Filter impulse response as wave. You will then select stereo and you will take note of the date for your left speaker and your right speaker. This is your left channel, your right channel. So my left channel is 72326. There we go. And my right channel is 72547. You will then select whatever you want. I usually select 32 bit. You'll normalize and you will select your sample rate. Special notes regarding sample rate. If you're going to be put into a convolution plugin, if you're using a sample rate of 44,100 as your impulse response, but you're in a session of 48,000 kilohertz, what's going to happen is it's going to the most convolution plugins can upsample. But you need to take special note that that can affect the wet dry signal. So I recommend exporting an impulse response at the sample rate that you're going to be working at. You'll hit OK, and then you will name it, and then you will save it. As you can see, I named this Sony Correction, and I've already done that. Now, real quick, important note, and that is that the amount of smoothing that you choose on your EQ filters tab will change the filters that are created. If you choose like a one third, you're going to have a different filter creation than if you chose one twenty fourth smoothing. So just so you guys know. Now, you can then put on your master bus, your convolution plugin, and then load your impulse response that you created with the correction filters. Now, this is just a quick demonstration. I have some pink noise here. What I did was I exported my actual room sound. I got it imported into this. And I'm going to, so this is basically my room over here. And my room is going to go through the correction and we're going to see the response. I'm now going to remove correction. I will now enable correction. What you're seeing is a theoretical correction of my room. You've already seen the actual trace that I did when I actually scanned my room or measured my room. 
Now, as I've said, this is not a full room EQ wizard tutorial. However, if you feel that the videos on YouTube are not adequate enough, I could make one in the future. What I will tell you is that you want to ensure that your preferences are set to the correct sample rate that you're going to be doing in your sessions. If you do 48 kilohertz sessions, make sure you have 48 kilohertz selected because it's gonna make a difference when you export your impulse responses with the correction filters. Also, make sure that you have the correct calibration file for your microphone. And if you're using SPL. All right, so a quick rundown of what we're using here. These are the speakers that I measured. I put them in a spot that's not very optimal so I can get a pretty bad response so we can do some correction. This is the microphone I'm using. It says $75, but it's really about 98 because you got to pay $20 shipping because they're in Hong Kong. It's the Umic One USB microphone. However, I got mine from Amazon from this place right here. I'm not getting paid by them to show you this, but here's why I chose Umic One. I do have an ECM 8000. However, I'm having issues with my MU 1820M with some low noise and stuff like that. So why, why this one? I'm choosing this one because first off, you don't need a preamp. You can use it on your laptop. It's powered by USB. It's got a built-in SPL meter that's built into the calibration file. You can download a calibration file specifically for your microphone using the serial number. So that's a very big thing that you're going to need because you can load that calibration file into Room EQ Wizard. So you have that. This is the free software Room EQ Wizard that we are using to measure. All right, so this isn't a Room EQ Wizard tutorial. I can create a separate video for that. But there are some things I did offline that you didn't, didn't see. Now, first off, a warning, you're playing with some high decibel levels here. You can ruin your speakers. Your, you can damage your hearing, a lot of things like that. So you got to be careful. I use my MU1820M to handle all volumes and routing and everything. It's pretty advanced, okay? So what I did was I brought up my generator. I turned down all my sound first, okay? You got to turn down all your volume on your main master fader, wherever that may be. You're going to want to bring up your pink noise generator. So you're going to bring up the generator and you're going to want to select full range pink noise. And when you press this play, it's going to play pink noise. If you're using the Umic One microphone, it has a built-in SPL meter. So you can just go here and monitor your SPL and you'll be set. However, if you're using something like an ECM 8000 microphone, you're going to need to calibrate it. However, like I said, the Umic One is already calibrated. So you will see your actual SPL meter. I don't have a microphone connected right now. Actually, you're here seeing my voice, and this is inaccurate. Now, so what you're going to do is you're going to play. I'm not going to play it here, but you press the play button here, and it plays the, the pink noise. You're then going to increase your volume slider up. Now, you had it turned down because when you turn it on, you don't want it to be super loud. You slowly bring it up until you start to get the pink noise. You watch your calibration over here, and you get to 80 dB. 80 dB is a good level because it... Uh, it's your signal to, no signal to noise ratio is really good. You can do 75, but 80 to 90 is a pretty good range. Now, when you're calibrating your SPL, what you're going to need to do is when you're playing your pink noise, you're going to have to calibrate your SPL meter for one speaker at a time, not both speakers at the same time. You want to set with just your left speaker playing by itself a level of 80 dB. And then once you take your measurement by using the measurement, Right here, once you do your measurement, then you're going to have to recalibrate the sound to your right monitor. However, it should be if your monitors are matched or your speakers, the Sony, they play at the same volume anyway. There might be small differences because of where they're positioned in the room, but I didn't have to worry about that. Once I set my left level, I was able to just move on and do the right measurement. Okay, so once you do that, you're going to want to save it. You can click on here and save your, your measurements. Okay, but I've already done it. I got my left Sony and my right Sony. So my left Sony here is the green and my right Sony is the purple. Those are the measurements that we took. Now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create the filters. Let's move on. So you're gonna press this EQ button. It's gonna bring this up. Let me set this to the size. Now there are a million different variations you can do when you do this. However, I'm gonna show you one method and that is gonna be the no boost method. We're basically gonna decrease Create filters that only do cuts. So I'm going to look at my thing here for my left, and we can see about 72.7. So I'm going to go about 73. We'll go 73. I'm looking at this little number over here on the left. So this is the bottom. I'm going to do about 73 decibels. So my equalizer, I'm going to set it to generic. My target settings, I'm going to set it to full range. This blue curve is basically showing you what is going to create filters for. But we want to create a full range. 
Okay. Now this is, uh, you can create a house curve, which is pretty cool. They added that function. I'm going to set this to one. This is not any particular way you need to do this. This is up to you. All right. I'm going to set this to zero, just flat on the top end, because you can adjust your, your top end by you listening to references while you're listening to your mixes, your masters. And then you can adjust by listening to other songs that you like using just an EQ on the master fader and use a high shelf, low shelf, and adjust the high frequencies yourself. So I'm going to hit zero there. That's basically, I just want it to be flat on the top end. Now my level that I wanted to shoot for was 73. 73 decibels is the target setting that we're going to be using. That wasn't the target. Remember, I measured at 80, but this is what I want to correct to. Filter tasks. Now, this comes to, in reality, with these speakers, again, I said I had them in a position that's not optimal. When I have them in an optimal position, there's not much correction that I would need to do. So they sound pretty good, and I don't really do any correction to those. However, if you're going to be doing correction, you, you normally do not want to go above 200 to 500 hertz. However, you can, okay? That's going to be up to you. I want you to experiment, okay? There's links in the description that go over all the pros and cons and how to do it and stuff like that. Um, these numbers are just arbitrary. They don't really matter because I'm not going to be doing any boosting. However, it might attempt to boost a little bit. So you can set these numbers here and you'll be fine. I'm going from 20 to 10,000 kilohertz. So all the way up to here, it's going to attempt to match to this little curve you see here, okay? Let's get rid of all these. And you see the target here, which is this line here. It's going to attempt to take all this and match it to this. It's going to create filters, which we're about to do. So once you have all this set, you're going to want to do this for the left and the right. You're going to want to keep the same settings. So don't worry about nothing down here. All you got to do is click match response to target. It's going to tell you, oh, no, wait, you're below the target level. That's okay. It is now going to start assigning its filters. Uh, depending on your computer, this is a slower computer, my music computer. It's got like a quad core 6600 Intel. My other computer, which is my video editing computer, it's got like an i7 4790K. It's got, it's, it's pretty decked out, right? It's got like 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's got all kinds of stuff, okay? So it's going to be way faster. It breezes right through this. As you can see, it's taking this computer a little bit longer. So it depends on the speed of your computer, how long it's going to take. As I was saying, you're, th we are doing a cut method. We are basically, we're not doing any boost. We're basically just cutting all the frequencies to create a response that's basically not boosting. Many people feel that there's a whole debate on it, which I'm not going to get on, into as far as boosting and cutting and what you should be doing. There's going to be, like I said, links in the description that cover all that. So we're going to skip all this. We're going to come back and then I'm going to move to the right. We'll do the right and then we'll move on. So I have created my filters for the left. Yours may not look like this. And the reason why is because you need to come up here and you will have this checked. These are the filters, but you want to invert them and see what's actually happening because we're doing a lot of cuts here. And you can use those settings there. Now, this is what it says that in the end, what we're going to be dealing with. This is going to be, this is our predicted, what it thinks when we do, a, if we were to measure this response using these correction filters, that this is basically the response that we're going to get. Okay, these are the filters that it's creating. Okay, and this is the actual measurement. All right, so we're done with that. Now we need to bring up the right. So let's bring up the right, and you got to do the same thing. So just so you can get a quick overview again, I'll just do it real quick. EQ button. Make sure that we're set the full range. Come up here, make sure you select generic. You can experiment with these. Look these up and see which one you think might, because they all create different types of filters because each one has different uh, capabilities. I'm going to come down here, set this to zero. Some of you may want to do a like 1 dB at 4,000 kilohertz. Uh, look at different house curves, research house curves, um, what people like, what people don't like, what people you know expect or whatever. But I'm just going to say zero for the high frequency. As I said, you typically do not want to go above, I would say, 200 to 500 hertz. You really don't want to be jumping up here, but... And cause a lot of comb filtering and some other effects that I'm not going to get into. So we're going to use the same. Once you choose what you were going to use, which I believed on my other one, if we look at my other one over here, it was 73. So we're going to use the same. Sorry. We're going to use the same one. So we're going to come over here to the right. And we're going to use 73 as well. 
And as you can see, 73, this falls a little bit below because, like I said, they're going to have different responses for the left and the right. But we're still going to make sure you still use the same level, okay? Not 7,375, but 73. There we go. Everything down here should be the same. So all I changed was those numbers there, and I changed it to generic. generic. We will then hit, once again, match response to target, and then it's going to do its thing. It's going to tell you, oh, no, warning. It's going to do its thing. I'm going to come back when it's done. All right, so here we are with the filters for this. And as you can see, it is doing some boosting. That's why I'm telling you, you might want to put some boost in here so that you can do for some frequencies. You're going to need to boost a little bit. This flatness target here is basically, you can set it to three decibels, whatever decibel level you want, but it's saying how close to the target do you want the filters to create a predicted response? And I'm choosing one. So it's going to try and basically make it as flat as possible. All right, so we got our equalization filters. Don't worry, your equalization filters are around. Here they are right here, I'll bring them up. They're still there, they're hanging out. You didn't lose them, okay? You're gonna go over here and you're, now we're gonna export the impulse response that we can use with these correction filters inside of a com convolution plugin. So you're gonna go file, export, filter impulse response as wave. You're now going to look over here. It's going to be set to mono. You're going to want to select stereo because we're doing both left and right. And what I look at is it doesn't give you this name. It gives you the date. And I look at 26 p.m., 47 p.m. If you have two that are the same, which I don't, it'd be highly unlikely. But if you do, just look at the whole date. So 26 p.m. is going to be my left. And for my right channel is going to be my 47 over here. Now you're going to choose 32 bit. Leave normalized samples to peak value on. You're going to want to select the sample rate that you are in your sessions whenever you're doing it, whatever you're doing, mastering or recording or whatever, wherever you're going to be using this plugin, which is usually at the end of your chain inside of your digital audio workstation like Pro Tools, because you're starting to monitor your sound while you do your mixing, you're starting to monitor while you do your mastering. You're going to want to choose the sample rate because the plugin that we're going to use for convolution can upsample, but it does mess with the wet dry si signal which I'm not gonna get into, but just know you wanna choose the sample rate that you're gonna be using. I'm gonna choose 44.1 for this example, and then I'm gonna hit OK. It's now gonna show, ask you, you're gonna to navigate to where you wanna save that filter. As you can see, I've already done one, and so that's what we're gonna use. So then let's just say, I'm gonna name this test. So here's that test, but here's the one we're gonna import. It's the same thing. I just named it Sony Correction. Here's the impulse response. Some of you may know what an impulse response looks like, but we're gonna go ahead and check it out anyway for some of these others people that don't know how it looks. So here it is, and we're going to analyze it and see if the correction filters are actually there. So I'm gonna double click it, go to window frequency analysis. I'm gonna scan it, we're gonna zoom in, and these are the correction filters that were created. Basically the equalization that's gonna be used when you load this impulse response into a convolution plugin, it's going to basically send your sound through these filters and correct the response of your room using these filters. Now there are some files that I'm gonna be using in this demonstration, and I'm also gonna show you how to set different things up. The file that I'm gonna use is the actual room sound. So I can export basically an impulse response of my room by going file, export, impulse responses, wave. I'll select stereo, I'll select my left, which is 2336, 26, and then 2547. There's already selected, 32-bit, normalize. I'll hit OK. I'll save it. I've already done that. It's named Room. That's basically a stereo impulse response of my room. Another file that I'm going to be using is Pink Noise, so we can do our analysis and our theoretical measurement of our room. Now, how you get that is I go to Generator, and you can export different sounds. I'm going to be using Pink Noise, full range, and I'm leaving it at negative 20, and you hit Wave, and then you can basically export it. Okay, so I'll name this pink noise. It's already set, ready to go. I hit save, and my pink noise has been written there, and now I can use that in my DAW to analyze the filters and the correction. All right, so here we are in Studio One. First, we're gonna check it out, what the correction filters are doing, stuff like that, and give you a couple tips as far as when you're putting this on your master bus and you're doing your mixing. Now, when I say master bus, I'm referring to your master out, so we'll just call this our master out. I have a video tutorial it's pretty in-depth on tracks, buses, and sends. I'll leave a link in the description for anyone that doesn't understand that kind of stuff. That will be in the description. Now, where you want to put the Convolution plugin, and the one that I am using is the Fog Convolver. It's awesome. You want to put it on your master out as final in your chain. You can follow it up with an analysis plugin if you wish. 
if you're doing your analysis. Now, the fog convolver is the one that I'm using. I have the impulse response loaded for the correction. When you're using a, a convolution plugin, you want to make sure you don't have any special mojo happening. So you want it completely wet, the dry signal turned all the way down. You don't want to adjust the gain or anything like that. You want to make sure you're not adding any pre-delay, you're not adjusting the start or the end, you're not adding any fades, nothing, no high pass filtering. That's why I'm using this one because it allows you to do that. I also use SIR2, but I'm not using that for this instance. So let's take a more in-depth look at what I'm going on here. I did cover this earlier, but what I got here is the pink noise on track one. I have the fog convolver, which is gonna create my room sound. I have my room impulse response that I had exported. Remember we had exported the room impulse response as a stereo impulse response file. I got that imported. I did adjust the start and the end to get rid of some of the room sound because of course it's a room that's going to have some ambient noise in there, some, some reverb type sound. You're not going to hear this when I play it. I set it up like that specifically because it's an annoying sound, pink noise. You guys don't need to be hearing it. When you see the meters running, that is me playing it. And I'll also tell you when I'm playing the sound, you might hear a small bit of sound from my headphones bleeding into the mic. So you'll know when it's playing. Now this track here, the pink noise is gonna be playing through here to create my room sound. And then we're gonna be correcting it over here with this one. I have the correction filters loaded, the impulse response loaded, no adjustments, only what I had said before about bringing the wet all the way up and the dry all the way down. We're gonna be following it up with the span. So I'm gonna play it without correction. You're gonna hear my room, you're not gonna hear anything, but you're gonna basically see what's going on. So that's my room. You are seeing my room, basically, that's the frequency response of my room. Now, with those speakers. Okay, now, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna turn on the correction filter and you're gonna see it's gonna flatten it out significantly. So we are now flattening out the frequency response. Now, what this signifies is, Pretend like this is a microphone sitting in my room and this right here is a microphone sitting in my room taking the measurement, real-time analysis, and I am playing pink noise through this convolution plugin. This is what you're basically going to see. It's going to smooth out the frequency response. Now, the spam plugin so that you can do your own tests is free. However, I'm using the plus version, which you do have to pay for. But you can do everything the same pretty much, almost, with the free version. Everything you're gonna see me do here, you can do. Now, when it comes set up, it's step in the regular stereo mode to where you only see the stereo signal. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to edit this and I'm gonna turn this all the way up, okay? Now, what you wanna do is you wanna go to, if you wanna see the left and the right, you wanna go here and you wanna hit dull mono, right? So now you're in dull mono. This will not be selected. Then what's gonna happen is, this is gonna be your left. You're gonna come up here and you're gonna select your right. So now when it plays, you're gonna see both your left and your right, but you need to make some settings. So what I'm gonna do is you go to edit. You want your average time to be all the way up. And then you wanna make sure that your slope is at three decibel. Otherwise you'll have a weird slope going on. And then you wanna copy these settings. Oh, also you wanna make sure your block size is kinda of high, about 8,000. And then you want to set to RT average, and then you're gonna go copy to right. So basically all the settings are now copied to the right. Now, it does make the change slower. I'll give you an example. You see how long it's taken for you to see the change? That's because of my averaging time. Let me change that. Now it should be faster. So that's basically the settings that you need to use when you're doing your analysis. All right, so we're gonna start wrapping this up, but there are some warnings and some tips for you, okay? We're dealing with a convolution plugin, and our filters that we created, if you can remember inside RoomEQ Wizard, we used the all cut method where we find the lowest point and we basically match to that target level. However, another method that you can use is to meet halfway between the highest and the lowest point. So it's gonna do some cuts and some boosts. Either way, it's gonna cut some of the level. So when it's cutting the levels, so here are our correction filters once again, you see the baseline here, zero dB, and then we're coming down 
right here, and we're basically doing a lot of cutting. So that is going to decrease the decibel level, the sound level. What does that got to do with anything? Let me show you. Depending on what method you used, you may find yourself either cutting or somehow increasing the final output of your master channel. Now, this one is going to basically, when I enable this plugin final in my chain, it's gonna decrease the volume. So I may have to adjust my volume up. So now here's something to consider. If you're doing any mastering or anything, you need to be careful because when you are gonna finally disable to finally output your master or your mix, you need to make sure you disable the plugin. Otherwise, you're gonna export your mix or your master through the convolution. You don't want that. Here's the warning. If you just did your limiting and you were trying to see how the limiter sounds and everything and you were doing some convolution through the convolution, when you turn this off, it's going to be louder, okay? And you can harm yourself. You can bust your speakers, possibly. It's just a warning, okay? So be careful with that. So some other things you need to consider is your monitoring level. I'm set up for the K system. Look it up. Links in the description. And also I have my set to a certain level for monitoring so that I can basically listen to something and know how loud it is. But of course I have metering and stuff like that. Some people don't even care about nothing like that. They just listen to their sound, they turn up their sound and they just go by that and then they compare it to a reference. Another quick tip has to do with your monitoring levels. My system is set to a certain system. I use the K system, a link will be in the description. And you typically, it's recommended, not etched in stone because I also monitor at lower levels, but the Fletcher Munson or the Equal Loudness Contour Curves kind of go over that. If you research that, you'll figure out what I'm talking about. Some of you already know about that. But monitoring at about an 80 to 85 decibel level makes you hear frequencies more flatter, okay? Basically, if you're monitoring at a low level, you're going to hear the, basically, the 1,000 kilohertz region, your mid frequencies a little bit better than your high frequencies or your bass. So then if you're monitoring at low levels, you're going to end up increasing your bass because you can't hear it. And also the high frequencies is going to come out really bright. However, if you're monitoring at a more of a, like an 80 or 85 decibel level, you're going to hear how the bass is more represented. Again, this isn't etched in stone. It's just something that's kind of recommended. Research it. The next video in my digital room correction series is going to cover the digital room correction designer software and how you can use Room EQ Wizard to bypass some of the functions. This software creates different sets of types of filters, so we're going to be covering that. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, well, you can give it a thumbs down or whatever. Comment, subscribe. I got more stuff coming in the future. Thanks. See you guys later.